Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Valagar Alavane back for some more Dungeons and Dragons Online. Um, so we're actually right here outside of the Orum Lair, uh, the foundation of Discord Quest. Uh, if you're looking for how to get here, uh, here's a picture of the map. Or if you'd like, you can go ahead and watch that foundation to Discord video. The reason I didn't recall back to town to run is because the next quest is just along the way. So from Foundation to Discord, you're going to want to just exit. Kind of head back to that main path, which is just out here. And then we're going to want to make a left. Now, just down here in this fairly large open area, this is another location where you can actually run into some of the rare encounter dragons in epic giant hold slayer now for up here uh one we're gonna have us an explorer here you just need to head past the uh little campfire as well if you stop to break the breakables um good chunk of them it's actually gonna spawn in a couple of guys now despite the guy being an orange name he doesn't actually give you any experience uh, we only got experience because we hit that 25 kills but he does drop a chest all right so after that you're gonna want to actually head behind here now you are able to, even with a very low jump, be able to jump up and make it across. Um, it actually it's surprisingly easy. If not, you can again walk up, kind of get some jumps on here, jump up and over. But essentially, you want to jump over this wall here. From here, we're going to continue, kind of between the two giant uh, statues, the giant, the dragon. And just continue heading east up and around until you see these guys all right once you kill them uh, you can actually make your way around the top if you like so kind of up here hop down make the jumps across It'll actually lead you to this little kind of hideaway here. Now, in the past, they used to have a, a chest drop here. I have noticed it. I have noticed every now and then I, it does drop, though it does seem to be quite rare now in these cases. It is just a random loot drop. It's nothing special. Doesn't give you any XP. But I did want to point that out. A little bit of uh, giant hold history there. Uh, then you want to hop all the way to the bottom and yeah right near where these the two shrines are located we have our next quest which is a cry for help a strange creature carries someone inside here it had a tiger face full of hatred So first thing to point out, there are going to be a lot of the uh, the cats in here, and they are immune to lightning damage. So it can be a little difficult if you are obviously like a lightning caster. The other thing to point out is uh, they like to cast that cold shield on them, and they also really like casting magic missile. So if you have some protection against that, obviously that is a perk as well. Alright, so what you're going to want to do is obviously head through the doorway, continue heading north. Now the first thing you want to do is head off to the right, and you're going to want to go through this door here. And on the other side we are going to have some guys to kill, nothing special. But we are also going to have a Rakshasa Lord. Once he dies, it's going to drop the barrier to the chest there in the back right corner. 
or the northeast corner. And inside it just has a singular key, nothing special, but it is a quest item. And that key is going to get used right away on this door here. Alright, so the next bit, get more guys. And it's going to go through here. Now, on the other side of this door, we are going to have a few of those cats off to our left. So just watch yourself. And you can also have a spinning blade trap located right between uh, the walkway here. Now, the next bit is right where those guys are standing over there. Kind of where the, the diamond shadow is located on the... It is actually a broken floor. Now, the trick to this is not to head directly through the center, but rather you want to head on this line here. So you're going to start, and it's going to break on you. But as you're heading on that line... Uh, head up as you see about to the center uh, you'll be safe as again as long as you're walking on that line which case floor breaks out you can see the rest of the way Alright, from here we do have two doors that we can head through. Uh, this door is essentially almost optional and can be skipped. Inside of it we do just have a few more cats. Uh, so obviously you can pop in to kill them or you can completely skip it. That choice is up to you. I personally, I like to kill him for those extra kill count in the hopes to get the full conquest there. Uh, the other door is actually going to lead you where we need to go, which is past this giant little torch. Uh, warning, there can be traps on this back wall, just flame jets. If there are, uh, the box would be either before or right after it. And we're going to keep heading north. So this one here, it's going to actually be another breakaway floor. So the breakaway floor is located uh, kind of right in that narrow path there. Um, so just going to wait for that plague stuff to go away. And give myself a top up here. So the breakaway floor, however does not come into play until after you kill the Rakshasa Lord on the other side. So we can safely run across it, but it isn't until we kill this guy here that the floor will break. So now that we've killed him, when we go to walk across it, the floor is going to break on us. Alright, so again few breakables in the back bit of the room and a, uh, on top of it being a broken floor oh before I get to that we're also gonna have an iron key here on the southern section of the room or the right side when you get in um, aside from it just being a broken floor the other bit is there's going to be some spike traps coming out of the wall now, I want to point out, before the floor breaks, if you look carefully, kind of in the center there, uh, right where my kind of pointer's at, uh, the tile is a little bit darker. If you actually jump and kind of land on that center bit, facing the right wall, uh, you'll actually be in a safe spot. So I'll show you that. So it's one, two, three, four. 
So right in the, after that fourth one there, you'll be able to hop in and kind of get that safe one. So here we go. There's the floor break. And again, if you're looking on the bottom, it's the dark kind of path there. And it puts you in a very safe position. You're not going to get hit by any of these spike traps. And this will just allow you to get the trap box there. From there, all you got to do is hop back up. Or if you don't have that at all, you can just jump right across. If you are going to decide to jump across, don't try to jump in the middle as you will hit your head on the lance lanterns or can hit your head on the lanterns. Um, jumping on the side is a little bit safer bet. All right, so now we're in this section. So this is continuing on. And the key that we picked up it will be for this door right here, allowing us to progress. Uh, we can obviously open up this one. This is where the uh, the cats were hiding, and it kind of just does a nice little roundabout. Now the door here can also be trapped, so just watch yourself. And aside from this one, the one trap that is almost guaranteed is is up every time that is guaranteed to be up is actually the one coming up right away and it's almost a two-part trap um, so once we kill these guys I'll explain the trap how the trap and how it works there so how it works is uh, those jets there they don't actually hurt you what they do is they actually they're just air jets pushing you up to the top the first time that you hit the the roof it's gonna break the roof above that there's blade traps which will cut you down to size so the trick here is you actually just have your trapper run across they will be the first one reason being again if you hit your head you're the first person you're safe generally uh, then you just run right up against the door and then you're safely out of the, the range of the jets and we have the trap box right here which you can get from the safe position now disabling that trap disables these jets it does not disable anything up there but of course if they're not throwing you up you're not getting hit by those traps um, so yeah anybody walking after the fact like as you saw we hit our head on the roof if uh, Wolf would have come on after, instead of hitting his head on the roof, he would have head on the spikes, the blade traps, and it just, it's, it's not a pretty thing. Somebody, anybody, please save me. Also, the DM narration on this is just, oh, uh, that's cringeworthy. Alright, so once we get in here, we got both left and right. Uh... And we have a couple of bridges. The bridges can have a couple of little spike traps, nothing major. On can have it on both sides, which we did have it on both sides. And then you have the two doors. Now both doors, they lead down a quite a short path and leads to the end here. At the end, there is a lever. Now this has been found with personal experience and honestly it's not something you normally have to worry about just because of the timing um, but I used to have somebody I ran with which we both ran at approximately the same speed and we found out oh yeah before I get to that the levers here before you pull them they can be trapped as well uh, but as I was saying, we found out that if you pull this lever and the other lever on the other side, so the other path is going to kind of head up just mirror image of this one. If you pull them both at the same time, the quest will bug. What will happen is as you pull the levers, um, it's supposed to drop the bridges. 
but because you pulled them both at the same time, it only registers that one of the levers have been pulled. So, if you got a friend and you're both real quick, just make sure that you're not pulling them at the same time, as obviously the only real fix to that is to reset the quest. Or you can wait for the support to get back to you, which could be, um, in some cases, obviously they do get busy, can take, you know, out a, a few hours. You would be, time-wise, so much better off to just recall out and reset. But I wanted to point that out, that way you guys can, you're aware of it, and can just avoid that altogether by making sure you don't pull them at the same time. Alright, so from here, uh, once the bridges are down, it's going to bring into two very similar rooms. It's kind of going to look like this, water on the bottom. You're going to have a ladder up, or if you have the jump, you can actually jump up and, except I don't have my jump spell on, uh, but you can jump up and actually just grab the edge and pull yourself up. So, do it again here. Just jump up, pull yourself up, and then you're going to want to grab the levers here, which will drop down the next gate, or next bridge, allowing you to proceed in. Now, once you proceed in, we do have a lever and a rune. Pull that, and it'll start powering up this section here. You do need to get the uh, one on the other side in order to do that, as it does say you do need to illuminate both runes. So again, if you have a partner, one head down one side, one head down the other, get you done it real quick. enter we got the ladder or you can just hop on up at this point you would have killed your last lord and we can pull our lever to continue on however before we actually continue on we do have some extras in the water so if you hop into the water and swim to the center, so between these two paths, there's going to be a secret door. In the secret door, there is a lever. And this lever is actually going to open up the wall for us to swim all the way west and into an optional section. Now there is a little bit of a couple of spots to grab some breath if you need it, but it is a a little bit longer of a swim it's not super long but it's it's not super short either so once we get here it's a little bit of a right and here we go so the first thing that's gonna do obviously I recommend clearing this room and kind of going into this far corner as if you're too close to that door sometimes they'll open up the door and there's more guys inside so it's just safer to kind of do that and then head on kill the guys and there you go so now there's a couple things in this room the first being obviously some loot now the chest itself is locked, so if you want to get the chest, you do need somebody who can open locks. And then the second one is actually this circle here. So we do have a control box, and what happens is anybody standing inside of this circle, when you open the control box, is actually going to get teleported back to the start there. Um, so 
as soon as Wolf gets over here, I can demonstrate there. So you open up the box, gives it a second, it creates the portal, and it's going to teleport us right back to where the shrines were, right here. Uh, that way we can avoid the swim back altogether. So it's a nice little bit. I do want to mention the it does require intelligence in order to open up that control box. All right, so now we're going to head back on trail. So through this, we're going to head south. Craft more breakables. And we have another locked door and a door to our right. So we're going to want to head to right uh, or north, grab this door. It's going to have a couple of guys and it's going to have a locked chest. Or not a locked chest, but a chest. Inside the chest is a key to the locked door, is what I meant to say. As well, you should also have ransack at this point, if that's what you're working towards. Now, I want to point out with this here, as you notice, uh, we're now at the end room. And we're not quite at conquest yet. We're only at onslaught. This quest is actually fairly hard to get con uh, conquest in, even doing the optional underwater swim like we did. Um, the only real way to get conquest is to uh, be doing it on Reaper difficulty and to get a decent amount of Reapers. Now we have gotten a few, so we should be able to get it. Um, and I'll show you another trick to get just as many kills as you can out of this quest. So the first part is, obviously, you want to kill... Uh, speaking of creepers. Um, you want to kill the guys that are in the room here. And if that didn't do it, like it didn't here, once we open this chest here, one, it's going to have some loot, but it's also going to have a jeweled key. Now, this key is used to open up this one here for Ursula Tador, it won't let you open up any of the others. Now, what I want to point out here is this is actually an ambush. Ursula is a Rakshasa, and they will attack you. When she does, it's going to open up the cages on that one and these two here, and they're all going to transform into Rakshasa. Once you kill Ursula, the quest is over. So to get those extra few kills to try and push yourself up to conquest, you do need to make sure you kill these side guys first. So we are going to try that there and just see how we do. So you open up the door, talk to them. That's when they transform and attack. So we're going to try and kill the extras here first. All right, so we got one more to kill. Hopefully that gets it. If not, I mean, like I said, it is fairly hard to get it. And unfortunately, 120 did not do it. Either way, at the very back of this room, we got another chest. Uh, and again, this chest can have named items. Again, one of which being a the poison quiver. So there are two quests, both this one and the foundation of uh, the cry for help and foundation of discord, which can have that named item. At this point, we've now completed all the quests on this side of giant hold. So all that's left is to recall back to town and we'll pick up there in the next video. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and have a good one all.